My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I am David Struva, and I'm tuning in from Las Vegas. Beautiful day yes. out here. All right, Nevada, Nevada. There you go. That's cool. So, Dave, I got a question for you. Sure. Let's talk about, I mean, this, this question comes up all the time when we talk. By the way, Dave, are you on your Wi-Fi or are you on your data? Uh, I'm on my Wi-Fi. You want to switch on to data and then we'll do it again because you're coming out so pixelated. I only see a dot. Really? Yeah. So uh, how do we switch? Okay, bear with me. Sure, take your time. If you get if you get disconnected, I'll 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 add you again. There we go. Let's see if we can get him back. Give me a second, you guys. I think he's frozen. There we go. I got Better. you. Can you hear me? I got a big plant behind my head. And move over here. <laughs> Hold on a second. There we go. There we go. All right. So you switched you on your data? Uh, yeah. yeah. It didn't change that much. It's cool. All right. Oh, we're good. We're good. It'll get better over time. Let, let's see what happens. So, Dave, I got a question for you. It's probably the most common question that I have got in the past 12 years. Uh, I don't know if it's a question or comment. A lot of people are afraid of the word sell and sells and salesmen and saleswoman. How do we get this whole entire idea that selling is not what it used to be and it has been changed? Uh, great question. And it, it really comes down to mindset and what you think you're doing, right? Because if you think that you are needing to not be transparent, not being honest, not being forthright, then internally, you know, subliminally, you know this, right? And we've got a hard time wanting to manipulate each other. However, if your intent is to truly go out and help someone improve their life through your product or service, through your offering, right? And your intent is focused on I'm trying to help you, you know, achieve a better life, you know, have more, more time, more efficiency, whatever that value proposition is, then you remove that stigma, that fear, that reservation about selling. Okay. At what point... Okay, so let's say you, you, you're, in a, you're, in a, you're in a company and everything else, but you don't believe in the product. What's the remedy there? Because I feel like a lot of people, you could kind of see it on their face that they're trying to sell it, but they don't believe in the product. And I tell you why I know this, Dave. I, I had a friend of mine. It was crazy. He was working at a BMW dealership, right? He always raved about BMW, right? He knew all the numbers, all the features, all the benefits, everything else. But when he wanted to drive home, he was driving a Toyota. So one day I asked him, I said, don't you guys get good deals from BMW? He goes, oh, we get fantastic deals. I'm like, okay, how much are you paying for your Toyota? Why not with the same amount of money? Maybe like 50 bucks, not even a hundred dollars difference. He could have drove, he could have got a BMW, right? Yeah. And then I was wondering for a while and I wanted to ask him that. I was like, how is this possible that all day long you're talking about BMWs, you're selling BMWs, but then you drive home with the Toyota. How is that possible? He's like, oh, no, Toyota is a great car, man. I love Toyota. I'm all like, but you're doing that all day long. How could you do that? So I never understood that. Okay, well, you know, one of the easiest ways to, to have an answer to this is stop selling something you don't believe in. I mean, what's keeping you from, from shifting careers, shifting products or services to one that you really believe in. What fear, what insecurity, you know, what's holding you back? Like, why would someone do that in the first place? Maybe it's the culture and the environment and they really like it there, right? 
okay, but you're restricting really your true potential, what you're capable of doing, because once you have conviction, you know, and, and, and you can't fabricate convic conviction, you can't manufacture it somehow. It's based on our beliefs. And once your beliefs, once your conviction is aligned with what you're doing, man, success just rockets for you. And so many people get trapped in, you know, the, the comfort zone. It's the place that I know and, you know, I'm okay. You know, and, and, and you try and mind trick yourself saying, it's okay doing what I'm doing, right? Because it's, it's, that, it, it's that place that you, you just know the environment. But, it's, but if you just have the courage to break out of that and chase what you believe in, success is, is right around the corner for those people. Love it, love it. Let's talk about mental mindset. Let's talk about, I, I want to I get the definition of the vocabulary from you first. I do that to all the coaches. So what yeah. is the word mental? What does that mean? And what is the word mindset? Because I feel like we use them a lot these days, but sometimes we deviate from the actual meaning. Because I think like till 10 years ago, I wasn't hearing the word mindset. Now I'm hearing it a lot more. Everything is mindset. Everything is mindset. So what is mindset? Mindset, mindset, and mindset can mean so many different things. For me, mindset means that you have the ability to control your attitude, your thoughts, and your actions, right? It's this mental toughness that you create for yourself. When you can really follow through with doing the things that you tell yourself to do, to me, that's mindset. That's mental mindset. That's the ability for you to control your thoughts and your actions and make sure that they are consistently aligned. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many people get insecure or, or they get, you know, they don't really reach their capability because they're not, you know, they say I should read more, I should exercise, I should, I should, I should. And, and you know what? Stop the I should. It's just a joke, right? Just either do it or don't. And a lot of people beat themselves up over it. And so to me, mindset is that toughness to where you have control over your emotions and you, can, you have control over your actions and you just do what you tell yourself to do. So here's my question. You, 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 you mentioned mental toughness. What's the difference between mental toughness and being a hard hitter or hard ass? What's the difference? between a hard ass and being mentally tough. See, being mentally tough is about yourself. It's not about how you're in interacting with anybody else. It's, it's how you are managing your own behavior, your own attitude. That's mental toughness. If you're gonna go out and be a jerk to someone or arrogant, that, that's, 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 not, that's not mindset. That's behavioral modification. Uh, uh, that needs to be considered, right? That's like, why do you think it's appropriate to be rude, to be obnoxious, um, to be disrespectful to other people? Well, and Dave, what I mean by, 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 by hard hit is this. Let's say I'm in a business that's obsolete these days and it's not good. You're my, you're my coach, right? You, 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 you're trying to help me get my business going, right? I'm doing something wrong and there's no future in it. But I'm mentally tough that said, hey, I built this business and I'm going to go make millions of dollars. But as a coach, you're looking at it, you're like, listen, you're on the wrong path. This is not good, but I'm being mentally tough. I'm like, no, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit on this. I'm going to make it happen. At what point do you say mental toughness is letting go? It, I actually think you have to be stronger to let shit go, but that's a different yeah. question. You know, just letting things go is much more you know, it's, it's hard. So that's what I mean in that context that I'm doing it. I planted my flag, do or die. I'm going to do it. And you're like, dude, you're on the wrong path. You know, maybe, maybe it's, it's okay. Let's frame it in the way that people view failure, right? Because they don't want to fail. And, and, and they think that, you know, if, if, if I don't just, you know, put my head down and, and just plow forward, then I'm gonna be viewed as a failure. You know what? 
how about removing any thought that you ever fail? Because to me, the only time you fail is when you're dead. All right, you're done. The game is over. Besides that, everything that you're learning is feedback. And if you're doing something and you've been at it and you're not getting the results, yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a turning point. It's, um, you know, because sometimes you don't know when you're up against that wall and, you, and if you just persevere, then success can come, right? But you have to have some vision. You have to have some foresight to see the path in front of you. And if you, and if you finally stop seeing that path, you've got to change course. And, and to not fear that change, it just means what I've been doing hasn't produced the results. I've got to rethink the path that I've been on and is there a better or different way to do it that I haven't been thinking about because I've been blinded by just believing this was the only way. And I got to tell you, there is no only way to achieving success. Yeah, I was thinking the other day <clears throat> and I realized that I don't want to call it mistakes. I have done a lot of things that weren't right. The word mistake has got the negative the negative weight on it. So I've done a lot of things that weren't right. And I'm, what I mean by that is that I could have improved on it. It's just that I didn't know what I didn't know. So my question is this. As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you said the word feedback. But I feel like when the feedback is coming back, don't you have, need to have the set of the right glasses and eyes for you to look at what that feedback means. What if I'm getting the feedback and I don't know what it means? So I've done, so let's say I go open a business, entrepreneur. They yeah. go launch the business, do all that stuff, they make a mistake. Okay, cool, no problem. They're getting the feedback, shit is not working. Fantastic. How do you translate that feedback in what it is? That's what I'm having a challenge with. It's like, because I, I think Albert Einstein said, somebody famous said that, that two people get into an argument with the same mindset, they won't be able to solve the issue because with that mindset, they got into that trouble. So you need a third person with different views, different opinion to come in. That's why we have judges, we have this, we have other people that come and mediate, right? My question- yeah, I, I think the quote is, um, the same thinking that created the problem won't solve the problem. I like you already, Dave. I like you already, man. I like you. We're gonna, we're gonna be able to hang out. It's cool. So the fact that, that you, the fact that you, but you're in Vegas. I'm in LA. There's a five hours gap in between us. Just a drive, buddy. It's just a drive. It's just, a drive. <laughs> just a drive. Actually, but, I have. But I, I've but done I that many, many times. Saying. I hear what you're saying about this, and you know, a lot of times our ego gets in the way. It it just does. We we just think we got to figure it out on our own. Well. Look, there's resources all around us. That's having a mindset of abundance too, right? To realize that there's intelligence everywhere. And don't be afraid to, to seek out that, that wisdom, that intellect, to be able to give you that guidance on what really should I be doing? You know, we all learn from each other and that's, that's, that's evolution. That's, that's really growth, right? And so you never stop evolving and growing and trying to move forward and hey look we all come up with roadblocks and resistance and shoot i have i've told myself hundreds of times to do certain ventures and businesses and and it just you know i hit the roadblock and i stopped i quit whatever but through all of those experiences i learned something from it i grew from it and so there's always wisdom. There's always, there's always value in what you've done. The only time there's no value is if you haven't learned anything from what you've been doing. Then I agree. Worthless. I agree. So I think something that a lot of uh, people don't talk about it is that I think there needs to be a time that when you go do something and it doesn't go according to plan or the results are not favorable, you do need to take some time. That could be five minutes, that could be 30 minutes to analyze 
what you learn from it. Because I think sometimes we just move on, we go, and we're not learning from it of what happened and what we what we did wrong to get that feedback. I think we just we can't just move on that fast. Like you can't just say, "Oh, I throw the towel in, that's it." So I agree with that. Here's my other question: for you. Routine. How important is it for us to have routine? And I think it comes in different. I think you need to have a routine for self-development, for business, for personal life, for all other different things. How is that benefiting us? And how do we create routines? You know, I, I have learned that routine is, is really the fundamental difference between those who achieve success and those who do not, right? Because those who achieve success have a foundation. They've got consistency embedded in, in what they do from the moment they wake up. They're always dedicated to personal growth and personal development. Just as an example, if someone wanted to make a quarter of a million dollars a year, right? Well, the average person works 2,000 hours a year. So that would mean that you're making $125 an hour. What is ironic is people don't invest in themselves. So if somebody was willing to just do 20 to 30 minutes a day, a day of personal development, just putting good content into their mind. That means that on a, on a monthly basis, you'd be investing about $3,000 a month into yourself, into growing and learning more. But people don't do that. And, and so I love this quote by Abraham Lincoln, which, which he says, you cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today, right? What you do today is, is the spring load on what you can achieve tomorrow. And so how, are you, how, how have you set up the structure of your daily routine? Is it focused on your health, your mindset? Are you, are you learning something new, you know, consistently? It's, it's that structure that gives you that compounding effect. It's take the compounding of a penny every day, double a penny every day. As you know, I know you've heard this. And in 30 days, you have over a million dollars. That's the effect of compounding, but you don't get compounding if you can't stack it on each other. But Dave, you don't even get that effect of a million to the last three to five days. That's right. Because literally on the 29th day, now you run from like 500,000, I don't know the number, but whatever it is, right? From five to a million. So yep. to me it's like, and, and it's, it's, it's crazy because you could be looking at the first 28, 29 days and it's not significant, but that compounding effect within one day, you'll have half a million dollars extra, which it took you 29 days to get to that half a million. But literally on that day, it's doubling right there. So, okay. So you, based on your personal opinion and experience, you think if we do self-development, there will be a day that if you put it into perspective, we can go from 500,000 to a million. You could have that growth in one day? Yeah, if you take a look, I think one of the best wealth charts to look at is Warren Buffett. Okay, just look at Warren Buffett's wealth chart, and it'll show between, you know, his 20s to his mid-50s, he was grinding it out, grinding it out with, his, with, with, with what he was achieving. And then it just took off like a rocket ship. Uh, Jeff Bezos, I mean, just look at any, a, any of these wealth charts. And you're right. I mean, and the reason why people quit, they stop, is because we're so conditioned to chase immediate gratification. Like, we want it right now. We want the quick fix. We want to hit the ball out of the park. We want to buy that stock and have it rocket and, and do a 10x in, in, in a matter of a few days. And we don't have the tolerance or the patience anymore um, because the speed of technology and everything else. And so we stop doing the fundamental basic things that, that are absolutely proven to help move someone from where they're at to a much better life. And one of the greatest places to start is just, excuse me, is just investing in yourself. That's it. 
just invest in yourself. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that the average college student after they graduate only reads a few books the rest of their life. So you're saying- Which is, retarded, which is crazy. Stops. Which YouTube and everything else, like it can be the cost. It cannot no longer be the cost. It's like, listen, I've seen some, I don't know how it is in Vegas, but I've seen some homeless people with Samsung S9s and S10s. Oh, Literally great. brand new phones. Yep. And these are homeless guys standing at the corner. They got new iPhones, right? So I'm all like, I mean, most most books, the auto audio book is available on YouTube on some sort of sort of form. Like you might need to watch four videos to get the whole thing. You might need to watch 15 videos to get the whole thing, but you can with your cell phone service. You can so. To me, I don't even understand why that it should be mad. It should be illegal for you not to be able to read at least five books per year. Like it should be well, illegal. There should be a law. I think we live at the greatest time ever in history. I mean, we have instant access to to knowledge that we never had before. I grew up going into the library and using the Dewey Decimal System. You've got to be kidding me. You go to, and open up this this four by six card and then it will give you numbers and you had to chase well, I've done that day brother I've done that brother laser I have fish, done that. you know oh my god people have people have it at their fingertips and they don't use it I just That's don't great. get it I just don't That's get great. it so let's bring it back Dave I had another question for you okay. so you talked about you talked about routine and instant gratification but I want to look at it I don't want to disagree with you but I want to look at it from a different sense of view. So if I was on the other side, I tell you, because we want the instant gratification, that gives the okay to innovators and entrepreneurs to invent things and processes and services and systems to give us that, what we want in that instant gratification. For example, if we didn't want faster internet, we wouldn't have 3G, 4G, 5G. If we didn't want our, our food to heat up faster, we wouldn't have microwave. Or if, we want, if we didn't want us to be able to get to, from point A to point B, we wouldn't have Uber. So all of these things were created. Billions, if not trillions of dollars are being moved around and people are getting the benefits of it because you and I want, want instant gratification. So how do we say in this department, in this realm of world, I want instant gratification, but on this side, when it comes to my success, I don't want instant gratification. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, you, you really are. And let me, let me separate the two concepts because the speed of change today is off the charts. I mean, there's so many studies that say where we're at today uh, we're at the beginning, like Ray Kurzweil says, we're at the beginning of this explosive evolution of technology. And yes, we, we need this technology to make instant decisions. That's very different than talking about what you or I need to do on a daily basis to put ourselves in a better situation amongst everybody else to really achieve our best, right? Our true capability. And that's where having that consistent daily routine to where you're gonna take care of your physical body and you're gonna take care of your mental, you know, mindset, you know, meditation or whatever, whatever someone does. And then of course, always at least dedicating 20 to 30 minutes a day to putting good content in your mind because too often anymore, people sit on their phone and they, they numb out on TikTok, right? And, and so they're just swiping through all this stuff. And hey, I think it's good if it helps you diminish your anxiety or gives you some humor. But at the end of the day, if, if you're spending hours doing that, but you're not even willing to look at a good YouTube video or listen to an audio book for 20 minutes. You gotta be kidding me. That is, that's, that's where you just know that you're running the marathon when it comes to your life and it comes to how, you're, how you look at success.
Because yes, there are some people that, that you know, instantly pop from zero to hero. But you and I both know that that's, that's not the norm. And if people plan their life that way, they're gonna be very disappointed. The norm is we gotta grind it out. We gotta put in the work, put in the effort, take the action, and eventually it, 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 it will produce the results. So you believe that this is a question for history. So if you look back at this video, so let's say my daughter is only like 16 months old. Let's say she becomes 12, 13, so she can comprehend more of this stuff, right? She looks mm -hmm. at our video and goes, okay, you know what? My daddy and Dave did a video. My question would be this for the future generation. Do you think self-development would be still this relevant and this important in 10 years? And the reason why I ask that question is everything is becoming automated, the sales processes, the Zooms, all of these different things. I feel like that that human interaction, like before you had to go to a, a dealership to buy a car. So if there was a salesperson, ethical salesperson at the dealership, you could say that that person needs to go to seminar, get their pitches right, get their presentation right, do self-development. But now if you're able to buy a car via an app, why that person needs to go do self-development? Okay, I got you. I've got a simple answer for you. There is, there is something that technology will never do, in my opinion, okay? And it's the four critical skills that anybody today, if they focus on these four cr critical skills, they'll never be replaced through automation or through technology. That is critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and persuasion. Those four skills are, I mean, if you think about everything that we have in our life, it was created through the human mind. We have created everything. So all the machines have a limit to what we put, the information we put in it. But see, our mind has the ability to think abstract, to think what if scenarios that, that have never been created yet. And through that, which is, those four critical skills, when people focus on those, they, they will be in demand forever because you can't replace the ingenuity and the innovation that Great. That's not easy to people do. can create. Those What's four that? things are not easy to do. <laughs> those are, <clears throat> I mean, based on what you just said, if people have mastered those four, I believe we'll have a better world than what we got right now. The evolution. We, we're, we're always going to evolve. I, I said this like a few weeks ago about the whole coronavirus, which was, okay, for the first time, you have the world trying to figure out this vaccine, right? And, 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 and I told someone, I said, don't ever bet against humanity because humanity will always win. We're always going to figure it out. We just will, right? We're all, we are driven to solve problems. We absolutely are. And so that's the essence of evolution. We're always going to be evolving and creating a better world. And all this around us is just part of that. I agree with that. So do you think YouTube is going to replace all universities? No. No, I think it's a great platform. I think online learning is a great platform. The reason I don't is because you can't get that cultural interaction. You can't get the connections that you make or the sports, right? The, 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 the sporting uh, events that are part of universities. It's no different. If you see a concert on TV, versus seeing a concert live or any sport, sporting event, it's dynamically different. Okay, I would rather watch football on TV instead of watching it in a stadium. But when I go to a stadium, I get sucked into that energy, that vibe, right? And you have the same thing with universities. You get sucked into that vibe, that culture, that ethos that you just can't replace. You just can't. Now, I think a lot of the future skills, you don't need to go to college. You don't. 
Uh, you do if you want to be a doctor or an attorney, you know, some specialty type of careers. But no, uh, you don't need it. But I think the relationships and the cultural learning that you get, I think, is as well somewhat invaluable. I agree with that. Dave, how do people find you, brother? Oh, uh, they can find me many different ways. They can find me on IG at David Struve, uh, S T R O E V E dot, uh, no, it's not dot com. Or I've got my website, which is uh, ADS Consulting Service dot com, or just my name, David Struve dot com. Um, so you can easily now find what do you, me there. What do, you, what do you help people with? Uh, you know what, Mike? Uh, I help people with a few avenues. One of them, uh, I've got my own coaching business. So, you know, I help people just achieve their ambitions, their goals, to help remove those barriers, those limiting beliefs, whatever's blocking people. So I've got a coaching program. Of course, I, I do speaking engagements. I do live training seminars on sales. Um, so I, I'm in a handful of different uh, uh, venues. And so I just love being active. Um, I've also got uh, a, a project I'm working on as well over in Colorado. So many different things, you know? It's not one love, love. You're keeping it busy, man. As I if coronavirus it. never happened to you. You're just like, you just you know, doing it. it. Coronavirus what? I'm like looking around going, my life hasn't changed, right? Working from Listen, home. Is, is I have worked cool. harder during this pandemic than I've ever, like, I don't, I want, I want the virus to go so I can go get some rest. Oh, I feel I like, <laughs> I feel like because I knew we were stuck, I did more to compensate, but I realized that I've done more. But anyway, it's, listen, it's how you look at things, but it is unfortunate. Some people are going to go through it, but you know, as you said, we will survive. And what can we learn from this? I think as a government, as a country, as a society, as a humankind, we should do better when these things do happen. But then again, you know, it is you what know, it is. We grow through adversity. We always do. Through adversity becomes a, a new opportunity. And we always grow. You I just agree. have to look at it that way. So you can't think of, well, why is this happening to me? Okay, you don't get any answers from that. What opportunity can you maybe pursue because the cheese has moved? Look at it that way. Think of, wow, okay, I really didn't like what I was doing before. I now can approach a different career, something new that maybe really speaks to who I am. But don't be afraid of that. Chase your, chase your fears with courage and your life will, will really unfold the way that you want it to. Yeah, and I feel like, I feel like most of the time when we walk through our fears, we realize the shit wasn't that scary to begin with. It was just our imagination that made it too big. Most of the time you come out, you're like, why was I worried about this so much? Why was I panicking? Like this wasn't that bad. Nobody died. It was, I mean, hopefully nobody will die through you <laughs> conquering your fears. But I'm just saying like, it, it, yeah, it wasn't that bad. You could get through it. So it's There's just- study that, after study that shows that the anticipation of fear is 10 times greater than, than the actual process of doing whatever it was that you were afraid of because the mind is asking the question am i going to look good or am i going to look bad right and if you're going to look bad you have this you know my ego humiliation embarrassment whatever i mean it, it's it's crazy today that most of our fears are psychological fears we don't fear our life really anymore so then the fears that we are confronted with, and, and, and I teach people on this, the number one fear that people have today is the fear of other people. We are scared to death of other people. We don't even answer the phone. We don't even have voicemail anymore. Don't call me, only text me. I mean, it's crazy that we're trying to get away from interacting with people. I mean, it's just insane, right? But it's just like a cycle. I think we're going to go back to it. I think it was, what was it? It was, uh, I think when I noticed it, it was T-Mobile where they ran a, they, they, oh, it was Chase. It was Chase. I'm sorry. It was Chase when they ran the commercial. They're like, yeah, when you call our 800 number, you know, a, a live person answers. And for the first time when I saw that, I was like, 
What was it before? Like, how did we, so what happened that you went, so what, who was answering the phone that now you're doing a commercial that you want the masses to know that when you call, we pick up the phone, a live person responds to you. And I was like, that, 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 got, that got stuck in my head for, for, for quite a bit. I was like, so who was answering the, the phone pendulum. before? It's the pendulum of just life. It's like, okay, uh, we're going to automate for efficiency and to save in costs. So the pendulum swung that way and all companies did that. And now all of a sudden, I've got to figure out a competitive advantage, right? I got to be different. So then it swings the other way again and you go, you know what, because everybody's automated, we're going to say that you get to talk to a live person, human to human. And it's that, it's that constant ebb and flow that, that, you know, you just break from the herd. When you break from the herd, you're doing something different and, and you pay that competitive advantage for you. I agree with that. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time uh, out of your busy schedule being with us this afternoon. Um, we'll definitely be in contact. Let us know if you're, you know, you need anything from our team. Definitely here to help. Sales is a very fascinating concept to me. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of individuals that are watching our channel. Definitely, I think it's one of those concepts, just like self-development. You can't learn enough. I think there's always different levels that you need to learn because you could always get better on that side. And if the product that you got actually helps people, I think you you have the responsibility and duty to get good at selling and being able to educate people about your services. So we'll do a few more videos if you're up to it. I'd love to, I'd love to. And uh, very soon I'm gonna have an online sales course and, and love to talk about that as well. Definitely, let me know. Thank you so much, stay safe brother Dave. You got it, thank you so much. Talk to you soon, bye-bye. All right.